Erev Tov, Chavri, I'm Stephen Benun. You are watching Israeli News Live. We have serious breaking news coming out of East uh, Europe here, out of the Czech Republic. Uh, watching the news, and this is, of course, of the last two days. I'll bring you to the first one here that'll kind of give you a little bit of a preview of what we're going to be speaking about here tonight on the news. But yesterday, Czech CT24, that's Czech, uh, Czech uh, Televizia, actually reported about the Europe, European Union going to a whole new uh, or a one currency next year. Now, they didn't specify a new currency, but the entire European Union, this is including Denmark, Sweden, Norway, uh, the Czech Republic, who all, by the way, have their own currencies, their own individual currencies. The Czech has the crown, uh, the Danish has the, uh, the da Danish uh, krona, and uh, et cetera, et cetera. The Swedish have their own money, the, Dan uh, the Norwegian have their own money. But next year, all of Europe will actually have only one currency. But the strange thing is, no one has said what this currency will be, and they're not indicating that it's going to be the euro. Well, if that doesn't top it all off, in the news today, on the same television uh, news broadcast, they were speaking about how that uh, President Zeman, the uh, president here of the Czech Republic, which is more of a figurative type of office, much like Israeli's president uh, that they have there, Rivlin, is the president of Israel. It is more of an honorary position. But Zeman used to be the prime minister of the Czech Republic. Uh, he was meeting very much to the... Uh, to the defiance of the United States and many of the European Union leaders meeting with Vladimir Putin, uh, trying to gain some type of uh, better relationship with Russia in light of the tensions that are being built between Russia and the United States. And also tomorrow, he is going to be meeting with China's leader as well, again, trying to garner some uh, stability in the region for the Czech Republic. Now, of course, the Prime Minister of the Czech Republic has not liked this at all. But what was interesting on the news broadcast was they were speaking about his meeting with Putin. And Putin assured him that the Czech Republic doesn't have anything to worry about when it comes to the financial stability of the nation. He said, for soon, all the currencies around the world will change to only one currency. That was on Czech CT24 News Today out of the Czech Republic. And if that doesn't beat all matters, he all, they also spoke about how that Obama, his head is beginning to wrinkle from fear of what may happen between the United States, Russia, and China. China also revealed today, according to the Czech CT News, for the first time ever public, they said that the Chinese government has never revealed the type of weapons that they have to the public before. But today, China revealed that they actually have intercontinental ballistic missiles with 4,000 kilometer reach to start with. They said this also is making the West nervous to know just exactly what type of capabilities the Chinese have along with the Russians and, of course, their coalition building day by day. Also, in the Czech news, they also stated another shocking thing. Wish you guys could speak Czech. That'd make it all the better. They said the United States currency will collapse by the end of 2015. Very sad indeed to hear these things and very disturbing news to say the least. You know, most of the time we find this in conspiracy theories and news like that around the nation. Uh, we know that Jonathan Kahn has written about this in his book, The Harbinger and the Shemitah year and how that there would be a collapse in September of 2015. But the people don't realize that it's actually an orchestrated event. At least that's what we're finding out in the news over here and that it is definitely going to collapse by the end of the year. But what was striking is that how that President Putin tells President Zeman that there will soon be a new currency, a global currency. Well, there's no doubt who's going to control that currency. Let me take you to another little news bit here, not on the currency here, but to let you know just exactly how these things are building up. This is in the Catholic Herald. It says, Pope to host chief rabbi at the Vatican. That's interesting, isn't it? E Ephraim Mervis will stress the importance of the solidarity between the Jewish and the Catholic faiths. If that's not Israel's greatest enemy is the Catholic Church, and yet the chief rabbi of Israel is going to stress the importance of the solidarity between the Jewish and the Catholic faiths. 
Well, I hope I can tell the Jewish people the truth here in the very near future here when we go to Israel. Chief Rabbi Ephraim Mervis will meet Pope Francis for a private audience in the Vatican this week. The head of the United uh, Hebrew Congregation will be accompanied by Cardinal Vincent Nicholas for the meeting which is expected to cover issues including Jewish-Catholic relations and the role of the faith in the public sphere. The meeting marks the first of its kind between the Pope Francis and the Chief Rabbi as they seek to consolidate the collater collaboration development during the time Jonathan Sachs and Benedict XVI. The first meeting between the pair comes ahead of the 50th anniversary of Nostra Atate document a watershed in Vatican relations with other faiths. The document insisted that the Jewish community cannot be held responsible for the death of Christ and that Jews should not be seen as having been rejected by God. See, the Pope's doing all kinds of lovely things to reestablish the relationship. Israel, you need to be warned. He is not your friend. And this is nothing but a trap of the devil. Remember, he's fulfilling biblical prophecy in Israel. Obadiah prophesied that the Pope of Rome would come to Israel and would drink wine on the holy mountain, Mount Zion, and he's actually done it. They're building Jerusalem into an international city and a checkpoint on Highway 1. Don't forget this either. Anyway, it says the signing of the document by Pope Paul VI in 1965 marked the beginning of a new era in cooperation between the two faiths which uh, has seen the Pope and Jewish leaders regularly engaging in discourse and attempts to tackle the problems which uh, modern entity poses to, do, to, to the two faiths. Oh my gosh. You can catch the rest of this article in Israeli, Israeli News Live on our Facebook page there. And another interesting thing, another little twist there, there are some Jews that have a little bit more sense in Israel. Thank God for that, my brethren that have the sense. But it says the Palestinians are angered by the Sanhedrin's decision to put Pope Francis on trial. Ah, oh, I love it. That's on Breaking Israel News, uh, by the way. That's BreakingIsraelNews.com. You can look this up here or catch it on our Facebook page there. It says here that a Palestinian member of the Al-Fatah Revolutionary Council has spoke out condemning the self-declared Sanhedrin's letter to Pope Francis, which demands that the Pope rescind his recognition of the state of Palestine or face trial in Jerusalem. The Sanhedrin decided to try the Pope after the Vatican signed its first comprehensive treaty with the state of Palestine, thereby officially recognizing its statehood. The treaty was ratified on May 13th, as previously reported by Breaking Israel News. The nascent Sanhedrin has also sent a letter to U.S. President Barack Obama calling him on trial for criminal offenses against the Jewish people. Both the Pope and Obama have chosen to ignore the summons, but the Sanhedrin cries for justice and truth have not gone unnoticed. According to the Center of the Research of Globalization, Dmitry Delini, a member of the Al-Fatah Revolutionary Council, told the uh, Palestine online news service that the Sanhedrin's letter to the Pope included many false claims about the history of, of Palestine and seeks to rob the Palestinian people of their natural rights in their homeland and to deny non-Jews of any rights. My goodness, it only gets more and more interesting all the time. Anyway, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Please be very watchful about the days coming ahead. Uh, if these news broadcasts are a blessing to you, you can support this news broadcast. It's completely free of charge. And we certainly thank you for your kindness and your support in helping us get these, these messages out. You can go to IsraeliNewsLive.org. There's a place you can give there if you would like to do so. We thank you for your support and especially in these troubling hours that is coming up. If it's anything true to Putin's words, there are some very serious times very soon ahead. I'm Stephen Benu with Israeli News Live. Shalom.